Hello. Um, I want to do a quick add-on to the training video I published, and uh, I thought this time around um, I would uh, go through in, in our scene again and remove the first-person shooter and replace it with this vehicle, a car. Uh, furthermore, um, since the car has no camera, uh, I actually added two cameras to it. One camera is this one right here. This uh, camera here is basically what you see in the in the full view down here in the gaming view. It is a well, it basically is what I did is I went in and added a fresh camera attached it to the car by dragging and dropping into the car, car's hierarchy and then while selecting camera I made sure in order to you know, originally it was unchanged and that was not going to work in terms of how the car appeared here so I had to turn around and create it, make it the main camera so um, the uh, game knew that this was supposed to take up the whole display by putting it in putting the camera in the car's hierarchy and adjusting it locally which I have set this set to local by using this tool I can adjust the uh, camera accordingly and you can see this is the view of it now you'll notice over here that I got this little HUD view right here and that's where I have the second camera. It's going to be a little trickier for me to show it to you. And you can see right here that this of course matches that so that's the camera preview. And I'll try to back off and you can see way far away in the sky there is where that camera is. This is the trustum of the camera. The reason why the thrustum is the way it is, is that this camera is orthographic. You will take a spot down picture of the area below and kind of give what, what it's sort of like a map like feel to the scene. So what this will do is this will give you know, even though I have good view out here this little extra camera here is going to give me a view a, a, a bird's eye view downward at the car and I can see where all the other objects are in relation to the car including the in, including the end of the earth um now, the car, I'll go click back to the car, it has a uh, user control script already incorporated to it. It's right here. So, you know, it's, the, the, it, it, it's set right now for a four-wheel drive car. It, uh, I think, at top speed is 150 miles an hour, and it's at all the brake tolerances and such are set in here. This is all established slowly, so you can um, control the the car. Um, this time around, I don't know if I could show it to you, but I have. A joystick. This is one of the reason why I'm filming it this way. This joystick here, and with this little thumb control right here, 
I can control the car. So, with that, uh, we got our, so we have our overhead camera, and uh, we have our uh, third, what I call the third person camera, because you're really not sitting in the driver's seat, you're sort of a third person right, right behind the, the car looking in. So getting back to this overhead camera, there's one more setting that uh, that there's were actually two two more settings that um, I should explain. One is that I use a depth. The depth is designed to uh, you know it is designed to is well it sort of behaves similar to layering in a um, when you're doing uh, photo editing, say it's something like Photoshop, this basically it's super. It poses. It, it determines the the uh, order of which uh, the display here is uh, is set at. This is set at one. If I go over to the third person camera, you look over here. Now it's set at zero. Uh, this will display first. This will display afterwards when it goes through the cycles and the rendering cycles. And so the depth is set here. The other thing is is that um, I wanted to explain which is very important is this view rectangle. I have shrunken the view rectangle from the full size, which would take up uh, all of the third person view, down to uh, 0.35 by 0.75. This gives a wide enough thrustum that this view is actually. Uh, usable, which I'll demonstrate shortly, and um, I also on the, set the X and Y so I could put the camera as far north and to the center as I can, so I could still get a view of where I am here, and yet at the same time, look at this eye up and see what's going on here. See, In some cases I can almost steer the car using this scene alone. And I, it's good when I go to hit objects or to, or, or to avoid them. Um, one other thing is you notice is I managed to get speed trees to work finally. Uh, basically it was my fault. I didn't select the preset for the speed tree, which is what I was supposed to do, but uh, I was able to get this up anyway, and so this will uh, hopefully work, and um, therefore I got. My, my, my orthographic camera, my third person panoramic camera, this is a panoramic, referred to as a, as a perspective or panoramic or perspective uh, camera, uh, depending on, really is almost depending on the field of view. It's right now it's is 60. Um, this should work. We'll give it a shot. Uh, just so you know, and if you look down here, we also have some planes. 
We have a jet aircraft plane and a propeller plane. Both work the same way as the card does. And if you want to set up the cameras and stuff for the plane, you could do it exactly the same thing for the car. When we get it later on, we'll probably play with the plane. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start the car. I don't know if you can see this, but the wheels, you can almost see the wheels turning in the car. It was kind of nice as you can actually see the shadow of the car as I'm moving forward. so I can jump off of it. some sort of dynamics that cause me to in this thing because it doesn't know what to do how to react it just moves Tree. Found a 
It's interesting when I go up hills. Maybe I shouldn't have put so many trees in this thing. We'll take one more spin around the mountain. And that's about it. As you can see that uh, uh, the makings of a car game. Uh, probably need something like scoring and add other players, maybe some AI cars into the loop and have them run around and have me, you know, chase around them. But uh, I managed to do this with uh, out go, do, doing any uh, script writing and I didn't make any of the assets that you see here that came uh, straight out of the uh, Unity box. And, um, or what you get when you get the uh, personal edition of Unity. And um, you could pretty much, without any major programming knowledge per se, uh, get by writing, you know, very simple games in the, the Unity environment, and you can compile them, and they'll run on your PC, and or depending on uh, what setting you got this thing set for, I guess it will run on other uh, platforms as well. So uh, that's you know about it for this tutorial. Um, If uh, you have any questions, you can leave a message in the uh, in the slot below where uh, all the comments are for YouTube. Um, and uh, that should cover the lesson for today. Uh, see you later and take care.